the infant, when it gets hungry, it knows no language. So what it does, it, it, it cries and starts yelling. And that's yeah. something that the mother knows that since she cannot say I'm hungry, and the fact that it knows that it does not know any language, it's conscious as a human being that I am hungry, and I know that this person is going to feed me, but I do not know how to say it, so it starts yelling. Mm -hmm. That is the exact state of the believer wow. at that time. And the more they're going to yell, the less they're going to be believed because that's the wrong way of preaching. Yeah. Because when you are actually stifling, yeah. you, you have yeah. to do whatever yeah. to, to save your, your loved ones. Yeah. Everything is going to be so magnificent when it comes to the Jal that people who are going to be believers and going to be like, can't you not, can you not see the kafara written on his forehead? But people are like, you have just lost it, man. I can't yeah. see anything written on his forehead. Yeah. Imagine your son saying this to you, that, Daddy, you've lost it. What's wrong with you? You're so biased. You're such a molvi. You're such an extremist yeah. that you're not seeing that this is the biggest solution to the bigger problems that we have. And they could be saying that this is real Jesus Christ in flesh and bone, in spirit and in message. But they won't be able to do anything about it. And that's the biggest stifling that, 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 that actually comes with this word fitan. According to the world situation these days, uh, we know that all of the religions, uh, the followers of every religion, they are waiting for uh, some sort of uh, Messiah, a savior, uh, because of the, wo uh, the way the world is going. Uh, and in Islamic uh, religion, uh, we have a lot of text concerning this topic. Uh, one of those is like uh, the Jal. So this uh, whole series is going to be uh, covering all the aspects of the Jal and how this fitna of the Jal is going to come to us and how we're going to face it and the things that will need to be done to uh, save ourselves from this fitna. This is my friend Sahil today with me. Inshallah, he'll be uh, talking about this topic. Uh, Sahil, assalamu alaikum. Uh, I will start off with my first question uh, that we know that all the prophets that came to the humanity all had one uh, agenda, which was like Tawheed, Risala, and Akhirah. Uh, but besides this, we, we see that like every prophet has warned us against uh, a huge calamity, a huge test, a trial that's going to befall the humanity towards the end of times. And uh, that fitna has especially been termed as fitna til Masihid Dajjal. So uh, how would you explain this fitna? What is it going to be? And how do we relate ourselves to this terminology? Well, I think first and foremost, we better understand this word uh, fitan. Uh, we have a psychology which is uh, very uh, uh, unilateral. When we look at the word fitan, we actually think that something which is going to be really good, but it will have a very dark core and an evil core. It's going to be a exactly. very confusing thing. Yeah. Even though fitan itself does not really mean just that. If anything, at the time of the Jal, is going to be so adverse, so uh, devastating in, 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 in a, at an emotional level, at a, at a, at a, that, that people who know the truth will go through the biggest state of uh, powerlessness, helplessness, stifling, uh, which is going to be the biggest problem for those believers. People who are not going to go through trial are going to be way more uh, in number because they won't be able to tell the difference between right and wrong. And that's also helplessness if you look at it from a, from a perspective that, you know, they did not know any better. They couldn't know any better because they were not learning enough. I'm talking about people who actually would be believers even if they were waiting to, for the job and the job is going to come, they won't be able to do anything about it. And that is the biggest fit. You have to understand when when I don't know anything which is wrong and I'm doing something which I believe is right and I'm doing it for Allah and Rasul. It's, it is, you know, this is a problem. Yeah. But the bigger problem is that I know that I, I am going through, this is a, a, a wrong and evil man. This man has an agenda which is against the, the, my, my religion, my purpose, my whole belief. Uh, all the people are going to be running towards this man. So those are the people who are going to be a minority. will be going through the worst of the worst time. At that time, Everyone they will know will be running leaps and bounds towards the Jal. Wow. Everyone they love, their kids, their wives, 
everyone will be running towards the jal and those are the people their their fathers their mothers you know at the time there at that time it will be such a scarcity of 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 believers and those are the believers are going to go through the worst problem which is going to be the real meaning of fitan the real meaning of fitan is not just the fact that you can't tell from right or wrong the real meaning of the fitan is that you can tell between right and wrong but you cannot do anything about it this is such a big problem that uh, people uh, are not realizing it's because it's not installed instilled inside our psychological construct of this word fitan fitan is that state where where my hands are tied and i can't say anything about anything uh and and the people who i love the most the things that i care about the most are going to be burnt right in front of me because there will be a a a hellfire i'll be jumping into and uh it is uh in psychology we 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 we, we narrate it like um, a woman who has two kids maybe three kids okay in this case let me just uh, amplify this and one of her kids is inside the house and the house is just caught fire and for her to go and save the child will have a very big risk of her dying as well so she has to decide between whether she has to save for those two kids or she has to you know jump and save that that little child and she she has a lose lose situation right now it is such a big problem that she's in right now that it's just like uh uh you know in 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 uh infant psychology the infant when it gets hungry it knows no language so what it does it it, it cries and starts yelling and that's yeah. something that the mother knows that she cannot say i'm hungry and the fact that it knows that it does not know any language it's conscious as a human being that i am hungry and i know that this person is going to feed me but i do not know how to say it so it starts yelling yeah. that is the exact state of the believer yeah. at that time and the more they're going to yell the less they're going to be believed because that's the wrong way of preaching yeah because when you are actually stifling yeah. you you have yeah. to do whatever Yeah. to to save your your loved ones because but that's the worst way of preaching and people are like you know you're so evasive you're so so uh, aggressive yeah. you are you know you do not know how what steadiness is and how to build up a whole you know preface of what you're trying to build up is the where's the context where's the emotional plea there's not this there's no way to actually save everybody if you're trying to come up with a hook and a claw and trying to you know do whatever the jaw is going to be doing because the jaw is going to be massive <clears throat> when this word does not even do justice this massive word to the, the magnitude of what the jaw is going to be doing at financial levels and um uh, emotional level and individual level and group level and country level and the global level and, and you know astronomical level you know playing with time and everything yeah. everything is going to be so magnificent when it comes to the jaw that people who are going to be believers and going to be like can't you not can you not see the kafara written on his forehead but people are like you have just lost it man i can't yeah. see anything written on his forehead yeah. imagine your son saying this to you that daddy you've lost it what's wrong with you you're so biased you're such a molvi you're such an extremist yeah. that you're not seeing that this is the biggest solution to the bigger problems that we have and if they could be saying that this is real jesus christ in flesh and bone in spirit and in in message but they won't be able to do anything about it and that's the biggest stifling that that that, that actually comes with this word fitan and this is something which uh, people are not realizing that uh, the more knowledge that they gain the bigger fitan it is going to be because the m- number of people who are not going to be knowledgeable which is still true it was true till yeah, yeah. since 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 ever uh, forever uh, that more of the pe- most of the people do not have the knowledge so those people will be banking towards whatever is the savior at that point in time and people with some sort of wisdom will know that there's something fishy if not everything that they will have some sort of hints that there is something missing in this this version of jesus uh or the timing of or 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 the way is is you know the whole pattern that that people are going to be seeing at some level uh because kafara on the forehead is too big of a sign yeah too big yeah. of a sign yeah. you know i mean yeah. that's not a fitan yeah if i can see kafara then why yeah. why why this is not a fitan yeah. this is not even a trial yeah this is yeah. not in any meaning of the word fitan yeah of of helplessness and 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 you know powerlessness or of confusion if i can see kafara written on somebody's head 
sorry, yeah, he can, you know, it, yeah. he can turn the whole sun, you know, into something else. Don't like, do I'm sorry, but there's something uh, on your forehead, there. <laughs> yeah. you know, because I read about this, this very thing. Yeah. yeah. So I know it's raining because you just said kun. Sorry, but you, why don't you just say kun to your forehead and just raise this first, man? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because this yeah. is something that's bothering like, me. That's one of the most confusing points, like because we've been told that he's going to be having a very clear statement written on his forehead. Then yeah, right. still, why won't be able to do anything about it? Because. Uh, this is that's see that's why it's fitting yeah. because the power of ignorance and emotional flurry is going to be at its magnificent peak and you'll be left alone and not alone in in, in brazil or china you'll be alone in your own houses where your own mothers and fathers and sons and daughters will be ridiculing you and spitting on your face that you know you're the the guy was actually taking us to hell because he, they could see heaven at that time. And not just this worldly heaven. They'll be actually talking about the real heaven because at one point in time, the Jal is going to be promising the real heaven. You think oh. the Jal is not going to be religious, man? Everything in Hadith is about religion. Everything in the Bible is about religi the religiousness of, uh, of the Jal. The Jal will be carrying heaven and hell. The Jal will be saying, God. This, these are all religious terminologies. This man is not going to be a secular liberal. This man is going to be a right winger. This guy, this man is going to be a rabbi or a, or a priest or a, or a bulb for, for all we know. This man is going to be a prophet in his own claim. So he, he can't be talking about sin. No one, no one who wants to go do some party will be going towards the child. People will be actually going towards a salvation. Wow. Wow. This, this man is all religious in all the texts of all the prophets that this is a religious man coming in. You know, I'm not even talking about those right-wingers who are right-wingers in this current political arena. We all know they're not religious people. Donald Trump represents the right wing. Yeah. Pakistan is a right-winger party yeah. uh, before this one. Yeah. So, and even this one claims, claims to be. But the point is, these are not religious, religious scholars. Everyone, they didn't even claim to be, and people don't think of them as religious scholars. Yeah. Let alone a prophet. Let alone God. At this point in time, we better understand that this is a rabbi coming in, and this guy is going to be quoting Quran, and it's going to be under, making you understand, because ulama are going to be giving bayah to the Jal. Muslims are going to be giving, giving bayah to the Jal. Christians are going to be giving bayah to the Jal. This is such a big problem, people not realizing that what is the believer going through at that time? Yeah. He's going through losing everything he likes, losing everyone he loves, losing every child of his. This is the kind of uh, helplessness this man is going through. And this is the real fitness for the believers. And, and, the, and the worst of the worst state that he has is to, 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 to do is to flee. I yeah. mean, you, it's like the state of Badr, father fighting against the son. Literally, yeah. the, you know, the fight of the, the battle of Badr, when uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq is fighting against his own son. You know, yeah. Sammy? But in this case, you won't even be able to fight. And you, you're told to flee. Imagine the fitan at that time, that I'm leaving my little daughter and son. And, and you know, it is a little like uh, Nuh alayhi salam. Yeah, and there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a hadith which says that uh, a man will tie up his family, his women especially, with the chains so that they don't go follow this man, but they'll, they'll break be breaking yeah. the chains and going. And you also used the uh, word uh, savior for this guy. I want to ask you, like, since my childhood, I've always, like, I've, I've grown up, my friends, everyone I know, with the concept, like, at the time of the coming of the Jal, it's going to be like the whole world is going to be in, in the chaos. There's going to be too much wrongs going on in the society. It's going to be the world yeah. would have turned to hell. And at that time, the, the Jal is going to come with the Kafara written. Yeah, so it's going to be very obvious. So, no. so, so is it going to be like this no, or it's, it's going to be a not. different? This is a, the psychology of a regular Muslim that, you know, it's like, you know, uh, whatever the psychology of uh, al Qariya is, very close to the Dajjal time. You know, some sort of uh, chaos, some sort of, uh, you know, uh, devastation going on here and there at a, at, a, at a personal level as well. But no, it's not. The worst part about the Jal is the best part about the Jal. Wow. How do you define that? The best yeah. part about the Jal is uh, the world is going to go through hell of famine and drought and uh, 
uh, you know, agriculturally, the, the world is going to go barren for many years before the Jal comes in. So the time of the Jal is the best time in the planet. The history of the planet would not have seen that kind of prosperity and resources. Because wow. this guy will be raining like anything. Wow. This guy will be showering money. This guy will be producing dead uh, relatives. What else do you ask for? Psychologically wow. speaking, uh, this is not even in our psychology. We never ever, are we not trained on the psychology that the happiness is to get your dead relatives back. We don't expect yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So this is beyond the current state of psychological affairs at this time, when, when he's going to come in. Yeah. But we still know that if your child is dying and a doctor heals him, yeah. how thankful we are to the doctor. That's we not never going to cut it. Yeah. But if your child dies and he brings yeah, him exactly. back, yeah, that's yeah. way bigger of a state. Yeah, yeah. So the prosperity is not even imaginable. This planet is going to be so happy in the time of the child. It's the happiest time ever. I mean, no, I mean, world peace. The, you know, that ideal state, that is what the child is actually uh, eyeing out on and he's going to get most of it. So, so you mean to say like the way he's going to be known to the people is through the prosperity he's yeah, going yeah, to bring. He is, he is, yeah, he's going to be. Not as a person uh, who's going to be. a killer, like, shooter and you yeah, hunting exactly. for, you know, no, 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 this is not. Uh, those people are, most people, most people are going to be having the time of their lives. Imagine, I mean, why would anyone follow this guy in such grand numbers? I'm talking about billions here. Uh, this, this is very evident that since, of course, you know, we know to Hadis that whatever he can do, since he's going to be doing it, he'll be speaking every language of every person. He'll be doing any, I mean, it's like Santa Claus amplified. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This guy is going to come in and he's going to be showering gifts. And these gifts are not just temporary gifts. This, this man is bringing people from the dead. This guy is making your, your agriculture the strongest thing. And you know, when I say agriculture, all of a sudden your psychology is suppressed a little. I'm talking about those kind of bearing of the land, which this planet has not even seen. You know what I'm saying? This is something which only Jesus Christ or a prophet like can do and you know, grow that sort of fruit from, from the harvest that's not even possible for, for that kind of technology which we have right now. So this is something which is, uh, which we better understand. We got to reconstruct our psychology and do not think that the chaos is a sign of the child. No, prosperity is a sign of the child. Otherwise, what oh. kind of deception are we looking at? I mean, this guy is so clear. He's got a, a kafara written and he's you know, claiming to be Jesus and he's got some a one eye. He's got one eye. You know, that's also another deception yeah, yeah. that people think that he's going to have one eye and we're going to spot him. <laughs> I mean, what kind of deception do you think he is? Every Tom, Dick and Harry knows that. Yeah, is a one eye guy claiming to be God. I mean, are you kidding me? This is not how it's going to be. Not at least not in the beginning anyway. Yeah. Because uh, Sahabas never even, they did not have that psychology that, you know, one eye guy. So he's going to be the child because Ibn Sayyad did not have one eye. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And nor did Tamim Uttai talk about this one eye. He just said there's a man in shackles. He never yeah. said this guy had one eye. You know? Yeah. This guy is going to have one eye some, at some point in time. Because the Prophet describes his eye. Yeah. Whatever is going to happen to him, happen to him. But Ibn Sayyad is our, our missing piece of this puzzle of how to construct our psychology really well. This guy has That's to be... a very, very important point, actually. Ibn <laughs> yeah. Sayyad had both eyes, right? Yeah, so Ibn Sayyad yeah, so was a if, regular guy. Yeah, so why would they uh, doubt him for, for the job? Yeah. Nobody said, Prophet Sallam, you said the job is going to have one eye. This boy, little boy, has two eyes. You mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is something which is part of his uh, <coughs> repertoire, where he's going to have a very, very uh, attractive personality in terms of whatever he looks like or whatever he behaves like. Okay, so um, what is the Jal? How to construct the basic pr uh, picture of the Jal? Because we have too many philosophies, stories coming about the Jal. It's a system, it's the world politics, it's how the, it's the power of the economists, yeah, or yeah. is it a man in flesh and bone? Well, first and foremost, uh, they they, it is, I don't know why people actually start to confuse our own people by saying this is not a man. Uh, Ibn Sayyad is another example of why he's a man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's definitely a man. Ibn Sayyad is not a system. 
Yeah. Uh, he, he was a man. So uh, take it from the people who were taught directly by the Prophet ﷺ. And in this case, Ibn Sayyad, in the case of the Prophet ﷺ himself was there. Yeah. Okay. So it's not a system. Uh, is there a preparatory kit for the coming of the Jal? Could be, but we're not talking about that right now because I just told you the Hadith itself says <coughs> that it's going to be a very dry period for the planet. People are going to be dying from hunger before he comes because there's not going to be any uh, uh, agriculture left. But this man is a man. This guy is a human being in flesh. And uh, this man is a, a going to be at such a level of charisma, uh, potential for leadership. The guy who can time travel. He, he, he knows some stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so, besides, he's going to be claiming to be Messiah. So Messiah is a man. Yeah, but not a system. Not really, because Messiah is also a god for, for uh, three billion people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So he could be flying in the air for all we know for not, for, for, for yeah. at this point of the argument. But what I'm trying to say is that this man has to have a flesh and bone for Muslims to follow because Muslims are going to follow him blindly. Uh, most of the women, uh, for most of the following of his is going to be of women. Yeah. Not most of the women of the planet are going to follow him. That's not the Hadith. Yeah. So it's not about an anti-feministic thing that I have an opinion for. Okay. His following will have more women. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, so what I'm trying to say is that this guy has to be a charismatic leader with a lot of uh, uh, leadership uh, capabilities which are going to be manifested literally, literally on his everyday persona. And he's going to have a lot of attraction in terms of... Uh, uh, his spirituality, he will be very correct in doing whatever he's going to be doing. He won't be able, he will be sinless. This guy will be sinless. The first sin of the Bible that the book of Revelation talks about the Antichrist, it says that it, he will be made a king of the kings until he's going to hold the temple. And after his reign, he's going to, uh, somehow, he's going to, all of a sudden, um, Proclaim the, the original sin, which is incest, and, 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 and he's going to allow a man to marry his sister or daughter. And that's the first strike on uh, the, the, the temple and the, the, the church. And that's where the, uh, the declaration of Antichrist is going to come in. Which means, uh, also in the Bible and in the Hadith, that uh, this man is not going to, to, this man is going to be uh, better than the Pope better than any rabbi, better than any scholar that we have of Islam. This man will be right on, on the top of the hierarchy of how correct he's going to be. And uh, that's why most people are going to follow him. And on top of that, is, we will have, you know, a lot of uh, gimmicks. He's going to be pulling a lot of things from thin air and, you know. But I personally think that's going to come in. The miracles are going to come later on. Uh, he's going to, uh, first and foremost, not convince people through miracles. Uh, well, a lot of it could start from there, but, uh, you know, since he's going to be doing so many things in terms of, because uh, I am personally, I, my, my personal belief is that as soon as he's going to start to deform, is the, the, the more he's going to use his intergalactic technology, the, the more he's going to get deformed. And that's where the one eye concept comes into play. You use intergalactic technology. I think we, we have to talk about it. Yeah, we will. We will yeah, we will. But uh, <coughs> this, this, this guy who is going to come up with some sort of all, all the sorts of uh, political solutions and financial solutions, and he's going to be really eloquent. People will be drooling over his speeches. And uh, he will make things happen. It's not like that, you know. It's not going to be like Obama or Putin or, or, or whatever leaders or Mandela where they actually look for the majority of the, the people. He will be looking at all of the people. Yeah. Mandela looked for, the, for the, 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 the South African black race. Trump or uh, Obama is for the Americans. Yeah. Putin is for the Russians. Yeah. You know, there is no global leader right now. We don't even have a, a psychology for a global leader. This is the first time this global leader is going to come in and start to join uh, every religion together. Just like the Pope tried to do once and, you know, he was mm -hmm. deemed as the Antichrist. Because it is a psychological construct of the Christians that he's going to first and foremost come up with a uh, unification plan. But we should also as Muslims know that this guy is going to 
uh, come up with awesome solutions. Even we Muslims do have a unification plan regarding the Jesus Christ, when, like for the, his second coming. Yeah, when he's gonna come. Yeah. Like, then let's talk Christians about that in that good, good time as well, because that's that's a misconception uh, that we have. We are going to be okay. allied with the the Christians and some Jews, uh, but those are going to be the smallest minority from the sects of uh, Christianity hmm. and, and Judaism. Yeah. But that's very common. Like we think that he's gonna. Like we, we all the religions are gonna come under one umbrella. That's the kind of under the Jal uh, as well as uh, Isa Yeah, under, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But in the first instance, the Jal is going to be uh, uh, ruling for for most of the time of his own time <laughs> before uh, Isa comes and kills him. Yeah. But Isa is not gonna live under the rule of the Jal. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Isa comes in and the first thing he yeah. does is he goes after the Jal. Yeah. But this man is also gonna be claiming to be Isa before the real Isa comes. Right? Yeah, well, uh, that's my, my opinion because uh, the dream of the Prophet ﷺ is so <coughs> clear about what so the awesome. Jal is, uh, was doing in the dream when the Prophet ﷺ dreamt that uh, he saw uh, Isa ﷺ, uh, doing a tawaf in the Kaaba and uh, with his hands on the shoulders of two different people and they were helping him. And all, uh, be behind him, the Prophet ﷺ said that I saw the Jal literally mirroring Isa alayhi salam and doing the tawaf in the Kaaba. So well, that means that uh, the Jal is uh, going to do whatever Isa alayhi salam did in his first coming. Yeah. And uh, uh, he was just, you know, mirroring him to know what, what, what kind of knowledge and what kind of, uh, uh, you know, attributes Isa alayhi salam carried through uh, divine means of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This guy is going to have that access through all the other means, and even if they are divine by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're just as a tester or trial for us. So he will come as uh, Isa alayhi salam. I'll tell you why I think like that, because as soon as he comes uh, as Isa alayhi salam, yeah. he will have uh, three, uh, 4.5 billion people following him instantly, because yeah. those 4.5 billion people are waiting for Isa yeah. alayhi salam. Yeah. Secondly, uh, I just don't make up opinions because of uh, some sort of rationale I have. Surah Kahf, the first 10 ayahs are against the Trinity and the concept of us yeah. thinking that God has a son. Yeah. And the fact that those are the, the most recommended ayahs by the Prophet that literally kills this very concept of uh, people thinking that God has a son, which is Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so the other option is he comes as uh, Uzair which can be true as well for all we know. Uh, but uh, uh, because it's going to come from the Jews and you know, Uzair is the uh, same concept yeah. in Jews, which yeah. is uh, uh, in the Christians about Jesus, uh, uh, Isa alayhi salam. So the, the question is, since he has a four and a half billion people army already, yeah. so he might as well just pull this card out first. And uh, since the Prophet said, your Lord is not one eyed, that means we'll talk about the one eye, but he is going to claim as Lord. And the only prophet that is deemed as Lord is Jesus. Uh, so he, this also means that there's a lot of probability that he is going to come as a second coming of Jesus first. Yeah. And then this is why, in my opinion, of course, Jesus Christ himself comes back in and kills this guy. Yeah. Because yeah, if he were coming as Musa yeah. or Ibrahim, then the second yeah. coming of Ibrahim or Musa would have been done. This is how the loop is closed. Yeah. Yeah. So Isa Islam comes in to tell everybody that uh, this is what real Jesus looks like. And this is what real Jesus acts like. <laughs> and this is uh, the closing of the loop. And this is why uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept him in the heavens of wherever he's keeping him. So that uh, when Isa Islam comes in, the first thing he does is to fulfill the need of his second coming, which is to get that deception out of on his name, yeah. which billions of people are following. All of a sudden, when the Isa Islam is going to come, and we know through Hadith that this uh, Isa Islam is not going to reclaim his throne by just convincing people that hey, I'm the I'm the I'm the real Isa. Yeah. He's just going to go in for the kill. Okay, so I do have a question about like the second coming of Jesus because we have among Muslims an opinion that it's not the same Jesus; it's another man, or it's a, it's just a term like that. But I guess that's not the topic. The topic uh, is about the Jal. Uh, no, it's not even, so if it, 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 even if some people think that because uh, there is link to the child because there is going yeah. to add to the fitan of the child. Those are the people who be like, no, there is no second coming of Jesus. 
uh so when jesus is going to come in they will like you know both are the same for us man you're also yeah. as wrong as the, the first one yeah. so it's a, it's a bigger fit in you know yeah. uh you uh, us not believing in the jar as isa or the lord is as much of a fit in as when isa is going to come in and we're like no you're not as isa so this is yeah. a problem which is a big problem that's helplessness as you speak yeah oh and how are we going to determine so we will have to see both of them together and the hadith says as soon as the jal is going to see uh, isa alayhi salam from his breath and from his sight the jal is going to start to melt so he doesn't even have to kill him just has to be there and the jal is going to die wow yeah, so this is what uh, that's science. that's a lot like a comic mythical kind of concept that he's going to melt and stuff but we'll talk about that in the, the yeah we'll, we'll talk because about I, it. i believe there's a science behind everything that happens yeah. so is better we understand it in a better psychological and scientific manner okay uh, my next question is going to be uh, what have we been given to fight against this fitna the fitna of the job legs as muslims legs <laughs> that's the only thing we've been given because <laughs> okay. uh, the prophet said do not fight you yeah. cannot fight <clears throat> only a prophet is going to come in and if it were in my time i would have killed him yeah. but since he's going to come in the time of isa alayhi salam yeah. only he is going to kill him Yeah. and uh any anybody who who starts to you know uh become over efficient and tries to play smart against the jal is the first guy is going to uh you know um, go to fall for the deception yeah. yeah so legs fight uh sorry <laughs> flee flee you that's a direct order from the prophet so it's not even yeah. up for debate yeah the biggest believers will not be like trying to save people from uh, uh the deception of the jal Wow. As soon as they're going to find out the the right believers will be like grab everybody you can and just run. That's actually really hard to even imagine. Oh, yeah. uh, leaving your family in That's the destruction. That's why we started and, with helplessness. Uh, That's so. Yeah. And then uh we know that there's a special importance given to Surah Al-Kahf for the fitna of the jaal. Yeah. Well, it's not the special. That's the only tool that we have. Yeah. That's the only silver bullet for this vehicle yes, besides having legs you know <laughs> yeah yeah well let's connect uh, legs and fleeing yeah. and uh, go to the mountains uh, with surah kahf but uh, surah kahf is uh, is a later part of how we are supposed to construct our psychology against the jal okay. the first uh, thing about surah kahf is that the surah is a part of three surahs okay. it's a, it's in a group it's like a constellation Yeah. Those three stars are shining really bright and the prophet Muhammad said to Umul Mu'minin that like this that Surah uh, Isra, Surah Kahf and Surah Maryam. He 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 put his fingers uh, together and said these are the three great surahs. So uh we have to look at Surah Kahf uh uh and by using this hadith as a, as a very uh a uh, clear indication of how to construct our psychology around Surah Kahf. Otherwise Surah Kahf is the Uh I'll tell you why I'm uh, okay uh, let me just finish this first if you do not understand surah bani israel or surah isra you won't be able to understand surah kahf really well because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are no accidents in 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 the greater scheme of allah taala uh, allah taala does not do anything by chance everything by is by design especially the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the quran so when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said look at these surahs together and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put surah bani israel before surah kahf so there's a reason behind this and we can see it so well it's speaking to us surah bani israel as directs to, to towards surah kahf so much that uh, uh, even a blind man can see that you know there's a reason why it is placed right before surah kahf and it is uh, creating a certain psychology of the human muslims who are going to uh, engines of course and who are going to uh, try and understand surah kahf and as if they start with surah kahf they they will never understand that's what the umma is going through because they start with surah kahf and yeah. there's nothing about the jal in there yeah because all we know is that just read the 10 ayah of the uh, uh, these are the words of the hadith the read like one who keeps on reading the first 10 ayahs of the <clears throat> surah kahf every friday is going to be saved from the fitna of the jal So yeah. how can just stop that's a preemptive of a that's a preemptive words. medicine mm. so, you know the one meaning can be taken as if i start reading surah kahf's first ayah every day yeah. i'm delaying the time of the jaal okay. or maybe i'll be, 
I'm asking for my death before the child. That's also a prayer, by the way. That oh, I wow. don't want to be in that time because that's a short shot entry to hell. You know, most people are not going to make it in that fitan. Yeah. So that first 10 ayah could be a recipe for an earlier death before the child can come in. Or pushing it ahead by the prayer, you know, by Surah Kaf's uh, Baraka, that Allah Ta'ala is just, you know, delaying the entry of the child. Uh, it's like uh, Surah Kaf's mechanism, you know, we're just playing her Khizr's role here, but reciting the first 10 uh, ayahs and trying, you know, play that, that element of time and just push the, the Jal timing as far as we can. Because another he says that uh, the Jal will only come and we have, when Ummah is going to forget talking, even talking about him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So people are not going to be reciting the first 10 ayahs because we know we only recite the ten, first 10 ayahs of Surah Kaf or the Jal. Yeah. So naturally, they will not be reciting the first ten ten ayahs. Yeah. But r does reciting mean the same? Like just just reading no, these doesn't. words well, out no. without understanding? Because the Prophet said it to the Arabs. Yeah. Uh, they knew the meaning of the first ten ayahs. Yeah. You know and, and plus, the word tilawa means to follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. But we, but yeah. we think tilawa is like uh, to read. Yeah. Plus, Imam Nawawi has given us a very good uh, handle on this. He says uh, there are certain keys in Surah Kaf, yeah, are go keys. Uh, keys, which are going to be here for the wow. people who actually have the for insight. You mean keys to open the locks? Yeah, yeah. certain okay. you know certain hints, mm -hmm. certain certain structures inside uh, Surah Kaf, which are going to be for the people who can think and ponder over these, and they're going to find it. Uh, and he said they're going to find the. The solution towards what they can do for the for the for the times of the jal, not the jal. Of course, nobody can do anything but against the jal. So okay, before we go to Al Kahf, uh, you are saying something about the relationship between the, these three surahs. So how is Bani Israel linked to Al Kahf? What's special about Bani Israel? Psychology in the context psychology, of Al Kahf. Uh, psychology of uh, Muslim has to be built over <coughs> Surah Bani Israel. I think this is the most important surah. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the psychological strength of a Muslim in the time of the child. Uh, and what is the psychology Surah Bani Israel is creating? It is creating a very clear uh, psychology that uh, a Muslim should be casual about, casual about believing that, yeah, time travel is, uh, is, a, is a very normal thing. Time travel? Yeah, Surah okay. Bani Israel talks Bani about... Bani Israel, another name is uh, Isra Al Miraj. It's the night journey and ascension. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the surah starts with literally of how Allah Ta'ala is saying that we took our Prophet in our, the smallest part of the night towards the seven heavens and made him go through all of the journey yeah. and uh, made him see all of those great signs of uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Mm 